In this video, I'd like to discuss about a very, very important topic, and that is having a cough that doesn't seem to go away. So many patients really have this symptom. Um, they may have had some, some sort of a cold, for example, and they're still coughing, or maybe they, they just realize it at some point because someone tells them, someone, uh, family members, uh, comes up to them and say, you've really been struggling with this cough for a long time, you should go see a doctor. And I'd like to maybe give you my thinking as a doctor regarding coughing, what, uh, what is, say, a, a timeline uh, about when you should be maybe seeking medical help um, or medical advice regarding your cough and some common causes of cough and what might happen when you go see a doctor about a cough. So I'd like to kind of uh, go over all these uh, in this video. It's slightly longer maybe than my, my other videos, but uh, if you do watch it till the end, I think you'll have a pretty good idea of what to expect and um, if you should be perhaps considering um, seeing your doctor. I'd like to start by first saying that uh, an ongoing cough is something to maybe worry about a little bit if it's still going on after about six to eight weeks. So say after two months, if you're still coughing, if it's not going uh, any better, if it's not improving, if, if it's still there, it's the same or maybe getting worse. I think it's a good idea to go see a doctor about the cough. And that's not something that will always lead to a very serious diagnosis. In some cases, the most common causes of cough actually sometimes have nothing to do with the lungs. So this is something that I'd like to say from, from the beginning. Uh, sometimes it's not something serious like a cancer or anything like that, but it's important to note that sometimes coughing is a is a symptom that can hide many many other conditions and this is a very very important point coughing is a symptom it's not a disease in itself so many patients uh, come to come to the doctor generally asking um doc can you give me something for for my cough and actually that's something very hard to do from the beginning and i think that's not necessarily the right the right approach unless we know what the cause of the cough is so it's really important to know what the cause is. It's, it's probably the main thing because if we treat the cause, we can get rid of the cough and maybe there's no other treatment required for it. So there are certain medications that block a cough, but that's not always the right approach because sometimes, for example, if you have a productive cough, if you're, if you're clearing your chest of secretions and if we give you something like codeine, for example, uh, or um, some, other, some other treatment really for a cough and we're blocking your reflex to, to clear those secretions, they may actually build up and an infection can occur or you might actually start to feel worse. So it's really, really important to see your doctor and develop some sort of a strategy on how to deal with your cough. Say you've had a cough for six to eight weeks, it's not improving, um, you want to see a doctor. What might happen if you see a doctor about your cough? I think it's really important if you go see your doctor to have maybe your medical history somewhere handy, especially if the, you've never seen that doctor before in your life, and to maybe have a list of the medications that you're taking. If you can bring those to your consultation, that would be really, really helpful because the doctor can then sometimes pick out some causes for your cough, even from, from the list of things that you bring. It's not always the case, but it can help a lot. It can make the, the consultation move a, a lot faster and be a bit more precise and maybe start things um, faster for you and uh, try to, to develop this sort of diagnostic strategy faster so that you don't waste time, basically trying to reach a diagnosis because this can take time sometimes. So you may have to see your doctor a number of times before you can get to the bottom of things. The other thing is that your doctor may request, for example, a chest X Ray. So this is a simple picture of your lungs that is generally used to see whether there's anything obviously wrong in your lungs or if there's anything uh, for example heart related so this these are uh, things uh, clues that your doctor can pick up of a chest x-ray now if your chest x-ray is absolutely normal then obviously this leads the doctor down a different sort of algorithm to to diagnose the cough you might uh, get a physical exam so they may listen to your chest they may look for um, other things as well not only related to your chest so for example if you've got some ankle swelling and you've got some um, heart failure or other things going on so it would be probably a general exam that you you might have with your doctor this is just really to to understand your health status better and to see whether there's anything that's explaining the cough that you're having another test that your doctor may request sometimes is especially if uh, he's suspecting a lung disease is a spirometry so this is a breathing test in which you, you breathe into a device uh, forcefully and it measures the volume of air 
uh, that moves in and out of your lungs. And that can sometimes give us an indication whether you're suffering from conditions like COPD or asthma, especially uh, if you have a medical history that is compatible with that. So it's not usually just a spirometry. All these tests, they go into some sort of a, um, a box of clues, let's say. And then based on all the information that your doctor gathers, they can come up with a diagnosis that's closest to, to what is really going on. Uh, sometimes other tests may be requested as well. So sometimes, uh, depending on the situation, a CT scan may be requested, but this is uh, usually later on, if, especially if the chest X-ray is abnormal, if there are some, some findings on the clinical exam. And other tests may include, for example, a sputum sample to see if there's any uh, bacterial colonization in your lungs. So this is if, uh, if looking for any infection, any any microbe that's in your in your lungs that may be maintaining some level of inflammation in the lungs that may cause a cough so these are all potential tests it's not limited to that so of course your doctor can request different tests based on uh, what his suspicion is in order to confirm a diagnosis but generally i wouldn't advise you going for tests before you see your doctor. I know this is not possible, obviously, everywhere in the world, but in some countries, it is possible to, to get tests before you see a doctor, and then you go with the tests to your doctor. I don't think that's a really good strategy. I think you should always see a doctor first, and then go for the tests that are really required, because that's the more logical approach. The first step after you've seen your doctor is really to exclude any obvious or serious conditions. So basically, before we start any treatment for your cough, before we, we, we go any deeper, really we need to make sure that we are ruling out serious conditions. So cough can hide things like cancer. It can hide things like tuberculosis. So these are conditions that generally your doctor will actively look for. So this is by asking you certain questions or maybe looking at um, your x-rays in a certain way just to make sure that they're not missing anything big. So this is really, really important. However, most causes of cough uh, that's ongoing for more than two months aren't as serious as the ones that I mentioned. So in most cases, there is some condition that's really not necessarily very serious, but it's maybe a chronic condition that's leading to this cough uh, being ongoing and bothering you. So by treating those uh, conditions better, you can sometimes get rid of the cough. Now, some potential causes that are not necessarily as serious, but are basically things that aren't always related to the lungs, uh, can include, for example, gastric re reflux, so gastroesophageal reflux. So this is basically um, mostly acid reflux coming from your stomach, going up through your esophagus and being inhaled in the lungs. And this can irritate the airways, obviously, and cause an ongoing cough. And many people who suffer with, with reflux do get a cough that doesn't seem to go away, or they may get some, some problems uh, related to ENT issues. So they may get a chronic sinusitis or rhinitis because of the acid that comes up and irritates not only the, the airways in the lungs, but also, for example, the nasal passages. So this is something that's sometimes overlooked and not many people necessarily make the connection that maybe it's the stomach causing the cough. So this is something that your doctor will uh, ask about. Another main cause of uh, an ongoing cough is something called post-nasal drip. Uh, so basically this is when generally people who suffer with some sort of ENT issues like chronic rhinitis, they get a little bit of a secretion that runs down the back of the throat, from through the back of the nasal passages into the throat, and that, that secretion can irritate the throat and the, the airways. And basically that can cause an ongoing cough. It's sometimes associated with a feeling of always feeling like you need to clear your throat. So, so post-nasal drip is a very, very common, common issue. Sometimes people may have that drip without actually having any secretions coming out through the front of their nose. So this is something that it's important to discuss with your doctor to see if, if uh, a trial of a medication, for example, a nasal spray may help with, uh, with relieving these symptoms. Another frequent cause of an ongoing cough is asthma. So asthma can sometimes present without uh, the typical symptoms of wheeze and um, uh, tightness in your chest. So sometimes people can have uh, asthma that is basically only with cough. 
So it's a cough variant asthma. This is how it's called. This is sometimes possible. So in these cases, usually a spirometry will help uh, define the diagnosis better, or maybe a trial of asthma medication will solve the, the coughing. A fourth major cause of uh, an ongoing cough that is sometimes overlooked is really certain blood pressure medications, for, uh, which are called ACE inhibitors, can have as a, as a potential side effect um, the development of an ongoing cough. It's something that's very well known if you actually make the connection and you tell your doctor that you're on the medication because depending on who you see, you, they may not know you're on this medication. So do bring it up. ACE inhibitors are medications that are taken usually for blood pressure or sometimes for kidney disease or heart failure. So they always end in Pril. So things like Enalapril, Perindopril, Ramipril, these are all ACE inhibitors. And usually when you're on one, one of these medications, you can be switched to a different alternative medication and the cough usually goes away within weeks, months. But of course, I wouldn't recommend making any changes to your medications unless you see your doctor and determine that that is the cause. But I just wanted to give you a couple of examples to see that there are a number of causes for coughing that sometimes aren't necessarily very strictly related to the lungs. Maybe asthma is, of course, but it's important to consider that it's a symptom of many things. And it's quite important to find out the cause of the cough because you may be able to actually treat the cause and get rid of the cough. Now, if there isn't anything obviously wrong, sometimes some people unfortunately have a hypersensitivity of the nerves that actually trigger the cough reflex. And that's something that's a diagnosis of exclusion, really, because you need to rule out all the things that I've said before and many, maybe some other conditions. And this hypersensitivity is usually quite difficult to treat, but it's important to only start treatments for the cough if all the, the other potential causes have been excluded. So how do we treat cough? This is basically where we come up to the solution. So I would say there are three potential strategies that we would consider. The first one is to treat the cause. The second one is to give some trial treatments. And the third one is to actually just treat the cough as a symptom. But that's the worst possible scenario. So the first scenario is to treat the cause. So in this case, for example, if you're suffering with asthma, we would treat the asthma. We, we would get an inhaler and that will control the asthma and control the cough. Or for example, if you're suffering with acid reflux, you might receive some anti-acid treatment and that controls the reflux and the cough. So these are examples where we know that the cause is there and we treat it. The second strategy is basically to give a trial treatment. So for example, sometimes we can't really pinpoint the exact cause, but we haven't really found anything very serious. So we're going to go and treat probabilistically. So for example, if we think that the patient may be suffering with post-nasal drip, we may prescribe a nasal spray for a month or two and see if that improves the cough. And sometimes that's the case. And then we know, oh, that was the, the cause. Or if that doesn't work, we may move on to something else. For example, we're not sure if the patient has acid reflux because sometimes it's very hard to prove. So we would give some anti-acid medication for about a month. And if that resolves the cough, well, that was the, the cause. And the third strategy is to basically treat the cough as a symptom. But this is where we need to be really, really vigilant. So we need to maybe get treatment for the cough as a symptom, but always bear in mind that there may be some potential cause that will turn up in the future. So it's always important if you are receiving treatment with cough suppressing medication to visit your doctor regularly. And in this case, cough suppressant medication is usually based on opioid treatment. So this is something that's quite important to know because these can have side effects as well. And it's also important to know that if you are suffering with a productive cough, so if you are uh, spitting out phlegm, for example, it's a very bad idea to get cough suppressant medications. So in those scenarios, it's really important to work with your doctor to find ways to clear the secretions first and to treat whatever is causing the secretions as much as possible uh, because blocking the reflex of cough when you have lungs filled with secretions will not help and it will actually make these secretions pool into your lungs. So this is a really, really important thing to keep in mind. And like I said, if you are receiving cough suppressants, 
to treat a cough, you're tr taking cough syrups, you're taking codeine, etc., for, for your cough, but you don't know what the cause is, it's important to keep visiting your doctor regularly to make sure that there isn't anything big that you are missing. I hope this video was relatively clear and it helped you understand a little bit better how a doctor might think about treating your cough. And like I said, the main thing is trying to find the cause as much as possible and then going from there, trying to give you the right treatment. But it's important to always have a discussion with your doctor if your cough is not going away, it's not improving. If you have any other questions, do leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in future videos.